Welcome back to SR Jobs Lab. And today we will see in our program if we have this definition defined. Member initializer, initializer block, static initializer block, and constructor. Then what would be the execution order of these uh, definitions? Right. So let's quickly understand first what is member initializer. Uh, when we will define any uh, member uh, variable. So in Java, uh, at the same time, we can assign any particular value also, right? So that uh, assignment is basically, we call it as in a member in a slicer. So let's say in program, we can define our member variable like this and we can assign some value in it, right, in Java. Similarly, if you see uh, initializer block, so initializer block uh, basically surrounded by uh, curly brackets, something like this. And in this, uh, we can assign uh, member variables and uh, we can call any particular method or operations, you know, before constructing uh, the object where uh, we have defined this initializer block. And if you see uh, this is static initializer, so a static initializer block is very similar uh, to uh, initializer block. The only difference is uh, it will have signature something like this where we can initialize only static uh, member variables or we can call only static method and at the last but not the least is the constructor uh, which will get called whenever we initialize uh, any object okay so now let's get back to um, our code editor and we'll write some piece of code uh, defining all these uh, definitions and then we will see uh, which part uh, you know will execute first so this is our program where we have our main method so let's write a code uh, to define our definition so let's let's call it private and here i am creating one instance of test class okay so let me define this class first And what here I'm doing is nothing but uh, I'll just print a message. So what will happen uh, as soon as this code uh, will execute, then immediately it will print this message, right? So member initializer is done. And now we will write a code for initializer block. And in this, again, I'm creating another instance of test class. So it will also will call this constructor. But when both uh, definition will execute, um, then it will print the same message, right? So we'll not be able to differentiate, uh, you know, who has called uh, which constructor first. So for that, uh, let's pass some kind of message over here. So let's, um, we will pass one string member member initializer right and we will store this in one string here something like this and we will append this okay similarly uh, when we initiate this one t2 that time we will pass initializer block okay so definition of uh, initializer block is done and now we will write the code to define static initializer block and here again we will create another instance and we will pass this message static initializer block and here uh, you know uh, don't get confused uh, with this uh, yeah, uh, we can do this uh, just because this is a local variable so don't get confused with uh, you know non-static variable with the local variable and this is the fact that uh, you know non-static variable we can, we cannot use uh, inside this static initializer block so if you have something like this private int x and if you'll try to assign this x here then it will throw an error right here you can see that non-static field x cannot be referenced by a static context but uh, this is fine okay and finally we have to create a constructor for this class 
so so this is a default constructor and again here we will define an instance of class test and now let's execute this program and remember that we have not added anything in this uh, our main method okay so let's execute this so here you can see that uh, output so output is the static initializer block test constructor is called so even though we have not uh, defined anything in our main method our static initializer block uh, has been executed right so that's indicate that our static uh, initializer block basically uh, it will uh, belong to class level uh, so what will happen is as soon as our class program uh, will be loaded then immediately our class will look into all this static uh, thing and it will execute one by one okay so let's assume if you would have had uh, this static mem member variable let's say t5 then it would have executed this line first and then it would have executed this static initial block okay so let's run this again and now you can see this output right a static member variable and then a static initializer block so this concept is pretty much clear that all the static things will belong to class level okay so let's remove this and now let's uh, create an instance of uh, this class sf jobs class let's name it uh, obj and now uh, let's uh, see what would be the sequence of our output so this is the sequence you can see here so first in static initializer block will get called followed by member initializer followed by initializer block and then constructor and that makes sense because if you see that initializer block so what is the purpose of initializer block to initialize the member variable right and if you would have not uh, defined the initializer block then normally what we do we will initialize member variable inside the constructor so there would be uh, some kind of situation where uh, before we construct any object you know before that we wanted to do some kind of operation or we wanted to do uh, or we wanted to initialize some variables for example let's say if you have to do something with the printer right so before you come into the existence uh, you wanted to check uh, whether the printer is connected or not so this kind of operation you can define inside this uh, initializer block so that makes sense that uh, initializer block is getting executed um, before the constructor call and if you talk about the member initializers so imagine this scenario in that way that you are declaring any member variable and at the same time you are assigning some value so you are saying forcefully that hey uh, as soon as this uh, variable come into the existence i want that variable to carry uh, the assigned value right so with this logic that makes sense that uh, you know if member initializer initializer will execute first you know before uh, initializer block and constructor and static initializer block uh, as we have already discussed that static uh, initializer block is a part of the class uh, level so as soon as the class will load uh, it will execute all the statics uh, related um, uh, thing or whether it is a variable or a static member initializer or a static uh, initializer block so that's all uh, for today guys if you like our video so please do share and uh, circulate this with uh, your friend just because this is not the single question we are going to cover uh, we will be covering all this java interview question answer with practical example uh, like this uh, we will code and we'll execute and we'll discuss about the executions and don't forget to hit the bell icon and to hit the subscribe button see you on our next video